Corey Sandhagen. Marlon Moraes. Very significant for the bantamweight title pitcher. Maximum five five-minute rounds of action. No touch of gloves. We see Sandhagen switching stances in those black shorts. Marais wearing the yellow. Sandhagen's going to try and maintain a little distance here, I think, and he's going to try and draw Marlon Marais in. The difference between the two stances, you, you'll see Marlon Marais is far more traditional in his approach. I'll have said that, he steps through with an overhand <laughs> left. <laughs> but th certainly the unorthodox strike in the movement of, uh, of Sandhagen. And this is what Sandhagen wants. He wants to try to get Marlon to miss these big swinging leg kicks like that. Get out of the way, land your shot, don't let him land his. According to Caesar William Hill, odds makers Sanhagen is the minus 145 favorite with the number one contender Marlon Marais plus 125. Oh, that overhand right from Marlon Marais. Nice leg kick there. Yeah, immediately Corey. we saw some redness on the side of the knee from yeah. Marlon Marais. Another one. Ooh, that, that's what he kick. has to avoid. That's the one thing that will nullify that footwork. Oh. Oh. And that's something that will nullify your consciousness. <laughs> right. There it is again. He's trying to come over that lead shoulder of Sandhagen. The height of Sandhagen's helping him, though, because as he's leaning away, it's actually bringing his lead shoulder up to block, so, block partially. Well, he did actually say that he believes his physical advantages and his style will suit perfectly to a fight against someone like Marlon Moraes. Well, the fact that Marlon Moraes does most of his work at distance is going to really uh, benefit Corey Sanhagen, the fact that he's the taller, longer fighter. And his movement as well. Marlon Moraes is going to have to really start to cut the octagon down and stifle that movement. And those kicks are going to help. And Paul Moraes will use those leg kicks from range, but get in the mid-range and he becomes like a wood chipper with his fists. Yeah, and you see already, he's trying to load up on these big shots. I think he's got to start setting them up behind a little bit of a jab, maybe throw some feints out there and some feelers to get Corey to engage in these strikes. Ooh. Ooh. Lovely variety in shots from both of these guys. Yeah, both guys' legs showing some, some redness from these leg kicks they're trading back and forth. You know, Marlon goes high. We haven't seen that switch kick yet. We expect lots of volume out of Corey Sandhagen. He's got the highest strike rate in bantamweight history. Marlon seems to be looking to counter at the moment, allowing Corey Sandhagen to close distance himself, being the taller fighter, and then coming over the top and around his punches to punish him. Nice movement by Marlon Marais, circled away from that. Oh, and a spinning back fist. Rice took his camp from New Jersey down to American top team to join up with Edson Barboza. Lovely uppercut to the center. Slick uppercut, yeah, from Corey. Oh, nice, nice, check. nice check. See, this is the thing with, with Sanhagen's style. It, he never picks one target and works it until it's damaged. He starts breaking down a few different targets at the same time with a variety of shots. And actually, statistically, Dan, he pretty much targets the body and leg equally. He really, you know, doesn't favor, doesn't discriminate <laughs> where he wants to hurt you. As long as it lands, it oh. works. That's good movement See, by this, Sanhagen this, getting this out of the way. Brilliant work from Sanhagen. And we talked about it on the pre-show, saying that he's got to be elusive. He can't let Marlon just start cracking these power shots. And nobody can. I mean, I, I, I know 70-pounders don't want to be getting cracked by Marlon over and over again. The man's a little powerhouse. Oof. Good block there. See the difference in the, in the pop on these spinning back fists. It's very quick <laughs> and snappy from Sanhagen. Marais is one that like, could have taken down a tree. Oh, that was a good body kick from Sanhagen. That was right on the liver. Right on the liver. And that body work is going to pay dividends later in the rounds. That's something Sanhagen feels like he has a clear advantage in this fight. Feeling like Marais may slow down as the fight progresses. And that work to the body is only going to accentuate that gassing. Oh, and Another again one. with the body kick. Oh, my goodness. That was beautiful. That was just so crisp. difficult to read if you're Marais. Where's the next attack coming from? Well, one of the things that it, Sanhagen does so well is, is he puts just touches, right? That, that inside leg kick, he didn't try to hurt him with that. That was a setup. Oh, well, this is... 
A good counter to that. Marais with the takedown. Catch takedown. Yeah. He's going to run out of time here. Just take a minute and have his, uh, have his rib ribs recover from those kicks. All right, let's take a look here. A nice inside leg kick from Corey Sandhagen. There's Marlon attacking the body. And Marlon throwing some big monster hooks. Landed some of them. But it, it was more the the slickness of Corey Sandhagen that took the round, in my opinion. Real touches like that, then to the body. That step in knee was set up by a little touch to the inside leg. Both guys had their moments, but I, uh, I believe Corey Sandhagen took that round. Right, clapped in, and immediately Sandhagen runs to the center of the octagon, ready to engage for round number two as they exchange leg kicks. So, so snappy everything with Sandhagen. It's almost like he's poking him and teasing him with that lead hand. Absolutely. Touch, touch, come and get it. Touch, touch, and then moves away. Forces Marais to chase, or maybe even throw a power shot of his own. Nice front kick to the body. And like you talked about, John, that, he, that Sandhagen was saying, ooh, nice question mark kick, that he's got to find that flow state. Well, yeah. it looks like he found it. His orbital's broke. His orbital's broke. That was what he shouted then, did you hear? Yeah. His orbital's broke. Who's very he telling? interesting. Oh, he's telling his corner. He's very close to Elliot Marshall and Christian Allen. Well, maybe he's just boasting. You know, he's uh, Let me see. Trying, to, trying to get the his guy on tilt. No, he that's swelled up straight away. Oh! oh! What, a, what a kick! And he follows oh! it! What a finish oh! by Corey Sanhagen! Enter oh! the wow! Sandman! Jeez! Straight to the top I mean, of the division with a win like that. Let's take a look at this. Spinning heel oh kick to the top of word. the head. Knocks him out and then finally rolls in there with some beautiful ground and pound. Look at this. And it's all because he's been setting things up so perfectly throughout the night. What a finish that was from Corey Sanhagen. And he spotted the swelling under the eye as well. Fractured oh. orbital bone. Very impressive from Corey Sanhagen. Let's make this one official. Here's Joe Martinez. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes at the official time. One minute, three seconds, round number two. Referee Mark Goddard steps in and halts this bout for your winner by TKO Corey Sanhagen.